I was going crazy. I've always found the sound of the sea soothing, the ocean air brushing the shore, the way the waves whisper, until the waves actually whisper. We're afraid, repeated over and over and over, ebbing and flowing like the water washing over the sand and rushing back out to sea. Hissing, breathing, sighing, hissing, breathing, sighing. I almost ran towards it, down towards the water and into the ocean to catch the voice, but just as my feet were about to spring forward, it stopped. I should start from the beginning. My name is Anna, I live in Flynn, I always have, and I have come to this beach every week for as long as I can remember. As a kid, my nana and grandad would hold each one of my hands in one of theirs and part walk, part swing me down the coast on a Wednesday afternoon. That was our time together. They looked after me on a Wednesday when both my parents were at work, and we'd walk down the coast and look at the sea. We'd watch the waves and the seagulls and the clouds move by. My grandad would give the seagulls voices and make up conversations they'd had. The seagulls would say things like, I know a great spot to get leftover fish and chips from, or... The people really love it when we sing for them, watch. Or, you look nice, do you want to be my friend? And sometimes they'd say, I love it next to the sea because I know that if I need to talk to someone, I can always talk to the waves. When I went to school, we kept it up. Wednesday was our day and the beach was our place. They'd pick me up from school and we'd walk down the road to the beach and we'd watch the waves. We'd started making up our own games. We'd chase the shadows of the clouds as they passed over us along the beach. Or we'd try and follow one way from as far away as we could see, all the way until it reached the shore. It was basically impossible, but Grandad swore he did it once. Me and Nana didn't believe him for a second, but we played along. He was the champion of games, my Grandad. He'd always win. He wasn't competitive as such. He was just determined and very clever. I think I get my determination from him. And it was always a release. It was always a constant. Some weeks were really good and going to the beach would make them even better. Or the beach wouldn't stand out at all because the other things were so exciting. Like my eighth birthday party. We went to Wet n Wild and everyone from school came and we just had the best time splashing around. (laughs) Joe Foster slipped over and knocked a tooth out and we were all really worried. But then the tooth fairy gave him £10 and he was over the moon. (laughs) Other times, I didn't have a good week. Like in year five when Stephanie Hardwick spread a rumour that I wet the bed and no one wanted to play with me for a whole month but I could still go to the sea with Nana and Grandad and I could talk to them because they'd just listen. They wouldn't try and fix it and they never told me off and whenever I was done telling them the things that I needed to get off my chest, I'd ask, what do I do now? And they'd look at me and smile and Grandad would always say, tell the waves and the waves will take care of it for you. When I was young, I thought that meant the waves would find a way of making things better Like, I don't know, sneaking into Stephanie Hardwick's bedroom late at night and leaving a soggy puddle on her bedsheets, perhaps. But I learnt that's not exactly what he meant. When I got to high school, we kept it up, except I met them at the beach. I was a big girl now and I didn't need to be collected. I could make my own way. Besides, it was getting harder for them to walk down now, so they drove and I was happy catching up with them at the car park. Plus, it was exciting for me. That was the most independence I'd ever had. As I became a teenager, there started to be things that I didn't want to tell them about. Things that were embarrassing or they wouldn't understand or that I was worried they'd think differently with me for. In year eight, Charlotte Kingston offered me a cig in the girls' toilets. A few of them had managed to take the smoke detector down and they were all smoking in there during third period. I was in French but I hated Mrs Robinson, she was so boring and I really couldn't be bothered so I asked to go to the toilet. The air was thick, I'd never seen or smelled anything like it. The girls all stared at me when I came in, these were not girls I was friends with. But I sat next to Charlotte in science and we got on alright so I guess that's why she offered me a smoke. 
I coughed so hard, I thought my lungs were going to bungee jump out my mouth and towards the toilet floor. But instead of springing back inside, they'd pulled all my other organs out with them. I don't feel guilty for trying it. In fact, it's probably for the best because that reaction made me new and never wanted to smoke again and those girls definitely weren't going to offer me any, even if I had. But I still didn't want to tell my grandparents. When they asked me how my day had been and I was a bit more reserved than I normally was, Nana asked me if there was something wrong and did I want to talk about it. I was worried about saying no because I I didn't want to upset them, but Grandad said, that's okay, you don't have to tell us, you can tell the waves. And I did. Not out loud, obviously, because then that would have been the same as telling them, but in my mind I did. And that's when I understood what Grandad meant when he said, the waves will take care of it. I just felt this huge release, like anything I was worried about was just floating out into the sea and I I didn't need to stress about it anymore. He could tell that I'd really got it for the first time, that what he'd been saying to me for years. And he said, whenever you don't know who else to tell, tell the waves. They'll keep your secrets safe. I almost stopped meeting them when I got to year 10. Not because I didn't want to spend time with them, There was this basketball club that happened on a Wednesday and loads of my friends went and for whatever reason I hadn't wanted to admit that the family commitment that stopped me from going was meeting up with my parents to watch the waves swim up to the shore. Something about being a teenager and showing that I actually cared about something, about other people I suppose. I thought they won't mind though if I stopped meeting them for a bit, just try out something different and get to do something with my friends. It was that Wednesday when I was going to tell them. That's when Grandad got the news. And I stopped caring whether my friends thought it was cringe or not. I told them outright. I can't come to basketball on a Wednesday because I'm seeing my grandparents and my Grandad is ill. It didn't make much of a difference at first. He was just the same as he had been. But when I looked at him, it was like I could see a shadow following him around. Always one step behind. It wouldn't always do exactly as he did, like Peter Pan's shadow, but not as fun. It would try and trip him up and make him stumble, or it tickle his throat to make him cough. It wasn't like the shadows I'd chase as a kid. This wasn't a shadow to play with. But we could still watch the waves and try and follow them into shore and make friends with the seagulls and tell the ocean our secrets. There was this bench which we decided had the best view of the Irish Sea out of any of the other benches. It's not an official award but it was to us. This bench had a plaque on it. It was small and brass and stuck into the backrest of the bench. It looked old and the inscription had rubbed off with time. We could just about make out the initials R, M, but not the bits in between to tell the full name. We decided that was okay because our last name's Martin, which begins with M, so it's basically our bench. We spent hours sitting there together, three of us huddled in tight. I'd sit between them and sometimes they'd each hold one of my hands and pretend to swing me back and forth like I was a toddler again. It got to a point where Grandad couldn't really walk anymore, so we had to get creative about getting him from the car park to the bench. It's not far, but it was far enough. We told him we just could just sit on a different bench, one closer to the car park, but he said, no, we're going to our bench. He was determined. He wasn't overly impressed when I showed up with a shopping trolley one week and told him to get in. If I was sprightly enough to get in that thing, then I wouldn't need help getting to our bench, would I? Nana managed to get a wheelchair from a charity, so I'd push him along. He wasn't very heavy. Grandad would always have a story for me every time we walked. Well, me and Nana walked. 
he got wheeled to the bench. Sometimes it could be nothing, something daft about collecting the wrong clothes from the dry cleaners and thinking he must have really put on weight the next time he put that suit on. Other times he'd tell me beautiful stories about how he met Nana and the dates they'd go on and the holidays they'd had. And every now and then he'd tell me the really honest stories about the times he was scared or the times he felt lost or the times he wanted to run away from it all. Nana found it hard because she loved to hear the stories but she knew he was telling them as a way to say goodbye. A gradual goodbye. So he didn't get to the end and have loads of things left unsaid. When he told me about being worried he'd made the wrong decision before he started his apprenticeship, thinking maybe he should have gone into something else, followed a different path. I told him that's how I felt about going to college in September. What did I, What if I'd picked the wrong things? What if I'd picked the wrong college? What if I'd wished I'd done something else? He smiled and told me that they were good questions and he said it's normal to be worried, but that worry isn't going to do you any good unless you do something about it. You either have to do something or you have to let it go. Is that when you tell the waves? Yeah, that's when you tell the waves. I didn't know how I was going to feel when I got here. It's strange. The air feels scratchy, bitter, as the wind pulls its fingers through my ponytail. It's cold for March. I look out at the sea. It's boisterous today. I try and follow a wave right into the shore like we always used to, but they're chopping and changing, jumping over each other, pushing their way to the front. It's impossible, so I, I just close my eyes and listen, trying to find peace in the sound of the waves like I used to. That's when I heard it whisper the hiss of it between the waves I couldn't make it out at first and then I heard it telling me that the sea would keep them safe that's what he said he always said the waves would keep them safe for me I could tell all my secrets to the waves and he would be safe ever since I was a kid coming here and having somewhere to share all the things I've been keeping inside and there's so many things that I've been keeping inside now I, I want to run out to the sea to him if he is out there somewhere to give him one last hug share one a secret and then it stops the whisper and all that is left are the waves I feel like even though he's gone he's still standing right next to me as I call out towards the sea thank you maybe now he can hear the things that tell the waves silently but I'm sure he can keep a secret too. I turned to the little brass plaque on the back of the bench and gave it a fond rub, checking one last time to see if I could make out the names that went with the initials R, M. But I couldn't. I took the lid off my sharpie and very carefully, to fit in the tiny space, filled in the inscription to read Robert Martin. And underneath, loving husband, father and granddad, champion of watching waves. I realise that doesn't sound like much of an achievement without explaining that the game is to watch the waves all the way into the shore and it's actually really difficult, basically impossible, but granddad did it once. But there's no more room on the plaque to write all that, so I don't. I just sit there, grateful that he was determined that this would always be our bench. Nana? It's me. I know I've been a bit distant. 
I wondered if you'd come down to the beach. I've got something to show you. Wednesday after all. It's our day. It'll always be our day.